So thanks everyone for being here. This presentation uh, will be divided into two parts. The first part will be about what's new in Workers 4 and will be presented by myself. And the second part will be about how to use Workers with Test Stand. And this part will be presented by Matthias. So my name is Peter Scarf and I am the main developer behind uh, the LabVIEW framework called Workers for LabVIEW. I have a background in mechatronic engineering and computer science, and I've been developing with LabVIEW now for approximately 13 years, mostly working on SCADA applications, which stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Uh, I'm a certified LabVIEW architect, and I've been developing for the past five years, uh, I've been developing Workers for LabVIEW as a hobby project of mine. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Workers, Workers is a queued message handler based framework for LabVIEW. And you can use it to develop modular and scalable multi-process applications in LabVIEW with the queued message handler design pattern. Other modular and scalable queued message handler design pattern frameworks that are popular in the community today, uh, number one, uh, we have the Active Framework, which is a heavily object-oriented style framework that uses priority message queues to send messages between modular queued message handlers known as actors. And then we have uh, DQMH, which is what I call a classic LabVIEW style framework, meaning it is a, not an object-oriented framework. And DQMH uses um, FIFO, so first in, first out event queues to send messages between modular queued message handlers known as modules. And then we have workers. Uh, which is the framework I'm presenting today. And Workers is both a classic LabVIEW and object-oriented style framework for LabVIEW. Uh, its fundamental core is built using object-oriented LabVIEW, but it allows you to develop in the style of the classic LabVIEW queued message handler template. And Workers uses the same uh, priority message queue that is used by the Actor framework to send messages between modular queued message handlers known as Workers. So, just like both the Active Framework and DQMH, you can use workers to develop modular and scalable multi-process applications in LabVIEW with the queued message handler design pattern. The first version of workers was released in 2018. Uh, and this version offered a modular queued message handler in the style of the LabVIEW queued message handler template together with an abstracted API. Uh, and there was only one scripting tool at the time, which was a debugger for the framework. In 2019, uh, Workers version 2 came out, and a few more development tools were added, as well as a few quick drop shortcuts to assist with workflow. Uh, with the most useful features being the Create Add Worker tool, which via scripting allowed you to create and add new workers to pre-existing workers uh, allowing you to quickly build up an application's uh, worker call chain hierarchy. And there was also a tool that allowed you to visualize the worker call chain hierarchy of your applications. Last year, 2021, uh, Workers 3 was released. A few more uh, dev tools were added, but this release focused mainly on allowing developers to inherit their workers from their own custom uh, worker base classes where they could add their own uh, common features that could then be used by workers that inherited from these base classes. This version also included a new sample project demonstrating how to create applications with uh, a custom base class. And the workers API was reworked with all public API VIs becoming dynamic dis uh, dispatch VIs, allowing developers to override and extend the framework's public API with their own code. And now 2022, we are at version 4, uh, which was released this year in July. Now there is a total of nine dev tools uh, in the framework and the possibility to uh, develop and deploy workers on NI real-time targets. The workers debugger in previous versions uh, is now called the workers debug server and allows you to debug and observe your workers' applications remotely. TCP 
uh, server and client workers were added to the worker plugin library. And the licensing model of the framework changed to the BSD3 open source licensing model. Uh, and this presentation will focus on the main new features in this version of the framework. And I know I should be uh, focusing on Workers 4 for this presentation, but I'm always thinking ahead about what, I, what else I can add to the framework. So hopefully next year, I'll be able to release Workers 5. Uh, I don't have too much to say about it at the moment, but currently the plan is to focus on creating easy to use APIs for the framework, uh, which hopefully will include uh, worker APIs and abstracted worker APIs. They can be used both within workers applications and also called externally from test stand because I really do want to make workers as easy to use as possible and accessible to a large portion of the LabVIEW community. So that's a quick history about workers, um, where we are today, and a quick preview of what is to come. Now, just to let you know, I won't be presenting uh, the fundamentals of the framework in this presentation. This presentation will focus only on what is new in Workers 4. Uh, but if you want to learn more about the fundamentals of the framework, I recommend watching the presentation I gave at the GLA Summit last year which explains the basic principles of the framework. Uh, and this link that you see on the screen will take you to um, the, uh, the presentation, which is hosted on the GLA Summit channel on YouTube. OK, so the main, the main driving force behind Workers 4 was to allow the development of workers' applications on NI real-time targets. It wasn't possible to deploy workers' applications on real-time targets uh, with previous versions of the framework uh, for a variety of reasons. And it was important to me that workers become a framework that made it seamless to develop applications on both Windows and real-time targets so that developers don't need to create different code uh, and have different styles of both development and debugging when developing on different platforms. So this requirement was the driving force behind um, Workers 4 and the new tools that I'll introduce in this presentation. So what's been added to Workers 4 to make real-time development with the framework possible? So firstly, to allow the observation and to assist uh, debugging of workers applications on real-time targets, the back end of the workers debugger in previous versions of the framework uh, has been reworked. The debugger is now a standalone Windows executable application that connects to workers uh, that connects to workers applications over a network and is now referred to as the workers debug server. To make debugging of worker queued message handlers on real-time targets possible with the standard LabVIEW debugging tools, such as uh, using probes on wires and adding breakpoints, a non-reentrant form of a worker's main VI has been introduced into the framework and has been given the file name mainnr.vi. And there is also a new tool called the RT Worker Convert tool that allows you to convert a worker's main VI between a tree entrant and non-reentrant form. To allow you to stream data between a worker's application running on a real-time target and a worker's application running on a Windows host PC, TCP server and client workers have been added to the worker plugin library. And you can use these uh, in your applications to stream data between applications running on different targets. Other tools that have been added to Workers 4 but are not related to real-time development include the Create Base Class tool, the Change Worker Inheritance tool, and the MHL Case Viewer tool. And these tools help you when you are creating and using worker base classes in your projects. And there are more changes and improvements that have been made in Workers 4. Uh, I don't have time to go over everything in this presentation, but this information can be found on the Workers documentation website, uh, which can be found at workersforloveyou.com forward slash docs. So these are the main new features in Workers 4. And I'll be covering these in the presentation. So this is what the Workers 4 Tools menu looks like. 
Uh, and as you can see, there are a few new uh, features that have been added since the previous version. Uh, in Workers 4, if your LabVIEW project contains an NI real-time target, then when you load the Workers Tools menu, you now have the option to select which target you want to run the tools on. In this presentation, I won't be demonstrating how to create a Workers application on a real-time target. But if you're interested in how to do this, then I've created a video for you, uh, which I released a few months ago. And this video is basically me walking you through how to create a Workers application on a compact Rio. And this video is available from the Workers website and hosted on the Workers YouTube channel. And the QR code in the bottom left of the screen will take you directly to that video, or you can access it by simply typing in a web browser, workersforlabview.com forward slash tutorials. So it was all very well and good to make the deployment of workers applications on a compact Rio possible, but there would have been no efficient way to observe and help debug the running applications using the framework's previous debugger. So as mentioned, in Workers 4, the new Workers debug server was introduced, which is now a, a standalone Windows application that has the same functionality as the previous debugger, but now connects to Workers applications over a network. And this feature allows you to observe and debug your Workers applications independently of how and where they are running. For example, it doesn't matter if your workers applications are running in the LabVIEW development environment, uh, in an executable, in a packed project library, or on a compact Rio somewhere in the network. You now use one debugger to observe and help uh, debug all your workers applications regardless of how and where they are running. And if your workers applications are running in either LabVIEW or in a uh, PPL, then you can use the interactive features of the debugger, such as jumping into the code of your running queued message handlers, et cetera. So now I'm going to demonstrate the use of the workers debug server. It's also possible to load the debug server from a Windows desktop shortcut, which is what I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm going to double click on the desktop shortcut and it's going to load uh, an instance of the workers debug server. And then you'll see some workers applications uh, connected to the debug server. The way you just saw is that once the debug server loaded, any workers applications that are currently running on the network will appear in the debug server. And we can, <clears throat> and we can see that in this example, two applications are currently running and have appeared in the debug service task manager tab as shown here on the screen. Now, because these applications can be running anywhere on the network, the task manager here, uh, in Workers 4 now shows you the IP address of where a Workers application is running. In this case, we can see that the Windows host application is running uh, on the local host IP address of uh, 127.0.0.1. And the below that, the C Rio target application is running at IP address 172.22.11.2. And there are also um, green LEDs next to the names of both applications, indicating that these applications are both currently active and connected to the debug server. So the functionality of the debugger hasn't changed significantly compared to uh, workers version 3.1. You still have both a task manager and a message log for your, for your running worker applications. But the debugger is a lot more versatile now, uh, allowing you to observe and help debug your applications independently from how and where they are running. The next tool I'm going to present is the RT Worker Convert tool. This tool was created because in Workers 4, a non-reentrant form of a Workers main VI has been introduced into the framework allowing you to debug your workers' queue message handlers with the standard LabVIEW debugging tools when developing applications on uh, real-time targets. And this tool allows you to convert a worker's main VI between its re-entrant 
and non-reentrant forms. Uh, by default, all workers are created with a re-entrant shared clone main VI, unless you are creating a new worker on a real-time target, in which case the worker will be created with a non-reentrant main VI with the file name main nr.vi. This is what the RT worker convert tool looks like, and it's pretty simple to use. The column on the left uh, shows you all the workers in a project that have a re-entrant main VI, and the column on the right shows you all workers in a project that have a non-reentrant main VI. If at any time you want to convert a worker's main VI between its re-entrant and non-reentrant forms, you simply batch select the workers you want to convert in one of the columns, and then press the convert button at the bottom of the tool. So to demonstrate what this tool actually does in a project, here you can see uh, a project containing a worker called uh, worker C with a re-entrant main VI, indicated by its file name main.vi. If we run the worker convert tool, the RT worker convert tool on this worker, then what will result is that worker C's main VI will now become non-reentrant and take the file name mainnr.vi. And the worker's icon will also take the nr designation in its bottom right-hand corner. And you may ask why uh, you need a tool to convert a worker's main VI between its different forms. So because workers is designed to be used seamlessly between both Windows and real-time targets, say, for example, you develop a worker to be used in a Windows application, and then you want to reuse the same worker on a real-time target. But for some reason, you run into issues with the real-time implementation and you need to debug the worker's queue message handler on the real-time target. Well, then you can simply use the RT worker convert tool to convert the worker's main VI into its non-reentrant form. And then you can debug the worker's queue message handler with the standard Levue debugging tools, such as adding breakpoints, probing wires, et cetera, on the real-time target. So that's the reason behind the addition of this tool. The next tool I want to present is the new worker library tool, which has been significantly upgraded since it was first released uh, in Workers 3.1 last year. The worker library tool will add a copy of a pre-developed worker into your projects. And these workers come with their own API. The worker library in Workers 3.1 provided only a message pump worker. Uh, and in Workers 4 now, we have uh, uh, a TCP server and client worker has been added to the library. And you can use these workers uh, to stream data between applications running on different targets. Both the message pump worker and the TCP server and client workers come with example projects uh, that show you how to use their APIs. And if you want to use these workers in your projects, then after selecting a worker from the list on the left, you can press Add Selected Item to Project, and this tool will add a copy of the selected worker into your project. If you want to see how to use the TCP server and client workers to communicate between a worker's application running on a Compact Rio and a worker's application running on a Windows host PC, then again, check out this video. Not only do I demonstrate how to create a worker's application on a Compact Rio, but I also demonstrate how to use the new TCP server and client workers in an application. Uh, again, a link to this video is in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So that's an overview of the features that have been added to the framework to assist with um, development of workers' applications on NI real-time targets. From here on, the next few tools deal with the object-oriented aspects of the framework, uh, starting with the create base class tool, which is accessible from the other tools drop-down menu as shown here. This tool allows you to create uh, worker base classes. And this is what the tool looks like. You have the option to select a name for your base class. Uh, you can type uh, in an icon header, and you can select the class you want to inherit your base class from. What this tool will do is it will 
create a base class. Here we have a base class called uh, base.lv class, which has been added to the tool by the project. No, sorry, which has been added to the project by the tool. Uh, and you can see that the base class contains a common cases uh, VI. And on the right, you can see the base class in our worker, in our worker inheritance hierarchy, with the base class inheriting from the ultimate base class of all workers, worker.lv class. So now we have created a base class that we can add a common functionality to. But the next step would then be to inherit your workers from this base class, which is where the next tool comes in handy. And the next tool I'm presenting is the uh, change worker inheritance tool, also available from the other tools drop down menu as shown here. This tool allows you to select uh, the base class that you want to inherit uh, your workers from, and then allows you to batch select the workers that you want to inherit from the selected base class, making it much easier to organize and reorganize your worker inheritance hierarchy in your projects. The last tool I'm presenting is the uh, MHL case viewer tool. Um, again, available from the other tools dropdown menu as shown here. This tool is very useful when wanting to gain an oversight over all the cases in your workers message handling loops. And also to see what cases override cases of the same name in a workers based class. And this is what the tool looks like. Uh, the tree list on the left of the tool shows you all the workers and worker based classes uh, in your project. So to use this tool, we would select a worker. For example, here we have um, selected the TCP server worker as shown. Uh, and then in the uh, highlighted column over here, we can see what uh, message handling loop cases this worker has. And we can see in this column that the TCP server worker contains the four framework required cases. So initialize, all sub workers initialized, start exiting, and all sub workers exited, as well as the cases uh, start listening, stop listening, and add listener. And in the column on the far right, we can see the cases of the same uh, name in a base class that are overridden by the worker. So for example, we can see here that the initialize case uh, and the start exiting case of the TCP worker override the initialize and start exiting cases of the TCP base class. There are also, there's also an interactive feature with this tool. In this tool, which is a right-click menu, that allows us to jump into any of the workers' message, message handling loop cases, as well as the overridden cases of the base class, which again helps us to gain a quick overview of which cases a worker has and which base, uh, which base class cases are overridden by the worker. So to summarize, Workers 4 now allows you to develop and deploy workers' applications on in our real-time targets. Your workers debug server allows you to observe and debug your applications remotely and now exists as a Windows application that is independent from how and where you are running your workers' applications. A non-reentrant form of a workers' main VI has been introduced so that you can debug your workers queued message handlers on real-time targets with the standard LabVIEW debugging tools, such as adding breakpoints, uh, probing wires, etc. The new RT worker convert tool allows you to convert a worker's main VI between its re-entrant and non-re-entrant forms. New TCP server and client workers have been added to the worker plugin library. And you can use these workers to stream data between applications running on different targets. Three new object-oriented uh, tools have been added in Workers 4, allowing you to create worker-based classes, change the inheritance hierarchy of your workers, and observe all the message handling loop cases of your workers, as well as what cases override cases of the same name in worker-based classes. And for the full list, 
of changes and improvements that have been added to Workers4, uh, they can be found on the Workers Documentation website, again, at workersforlabview.com forward slash docs. So if you want to know more about um, what's new in Workers4, or about how to use the framework in general, there are several resources now available online. Uh, the first is the new Workers Online Help Guide, which was also released at the same time that Workers4 was, uh, in July this year. And this guide explains the basic functionality of the framework and also discusses the various scripting tools that are supplied with the framework. There are also three sample projects that come with Workers uh, that you can uh, access when you install Workers into LabVIEW. Uh, and there is also my Workers tutorial video series, which is uh, available both on the official Workers website and on the Workers YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with the latest information about Workers, then please subscribe to the Workers LinkedIn page. This is the first place that I post information about new tutorial videos and new releases of the framework. And if you want to download Workers 4, uh, and try it out, then you can download it through the VI Package Manager. Um, so now I'm going to hand you over to uh, Matthias for the second part of the presentation. Yep. Perfect. <clears throat> yeah, good morning, everybody, from my side. Thanks, Peter, for the very good introduction in the new workers version. Um, from my side, my name is Matthias Kobli. I'm the CEO of Wes and uh, at and I have uh, 15 years plus uh, experience of development and as a project leader of automated test systems. Um, yeah, so far. Um, exactly. So what's the reason why we do this presentation here? Um, from my side, we uh, use this workers framework very heavily in almost every project that we did in the last year now, and uh, lots of projects use test and test test sensor on our side. So we were looking for a good way to implement workers in test and. So what or why do we use workers in test and the, the whole workers? Uh, frameworks helps us to create independent and modular code, which is very um, powerful for us to debug because we can easily debug only one module. Um, and we can also very easily commissioning the whole system because it can uh, go from one piece of code or one piece of hardware to the next piece of hardware. They are independent, so we can check the uh, multimeters um, independently of, uh, let's say, digital outputs or stuff like this. And we have the possibility to uh, make extension of the basic functionality of each module. So um, commands that we need in every worker, we just need to program it once and we can reuse it in every single worker because of the um, inheritance um, possibilities, yes. So, but uh, let's start um, in the beginning because messaging is queue based in the workers framework. We need to store this queue somewhere. So, when we launch a worker, we can we get the queue back because we need the queue to communicate with the uh, with the worker. But we have to store this, and that we can store or. Yeah, we store this now in an API and we use this API from test and so that we have a single or a simple abstraction of the whole worker functionality. So let's say we launch this worker and we store the uh, communication queue in uh, our API and implement all the commands that we want to send to these workers. So the API looks like this, the orange part is the API. So we have the worker queue, we have some functionality or some methods to launch, destroy the worker. Um, this is an example as an, an own or a climate chamber. So we want to stop heating, uh, set the ramp, set the point, whatever. These are the commands that we can use from test end. And underneath is uh, the worker 
which implements then this functionality like launch, destroy, um, heating stuff, set points, etc. So that's the easy part, and we can compile this as a PPL. So it's a single module that we can reuse in almost every next project that we want to use an oven or some some similar things. And uh, yeah, and it looks like this on the right side in a project. So there are very few um, different VIs that we use. We have on the first on the top we have this API which is just a simple clause with methods like destroy, launch, etc. as we have seen on the left side. And we have underneath the worker um, for this open clause with the main VI uh, on the bottom. And that's all that we need. So that's a single module which is working. And we can call it simply from test and we just one VI call for every method. So I told you we can uh, expand the basic functionality because of the inheritance or because of the object-oriented aspect of the whole framework. So it helps us to reuse this basic functionality that, that we need in almost every worker. So we have methods like launch and destroy. You, you have to use this in, in every single worker. So it makes sense that you only program it once and reuse it everywhere you need or like show and hide from panel we want to have the possibility to to show the from panel because we want to uh, commissioning the the whole system so it's easy to open in a running uh, test system to open the from panel that we can see what's going on on the system so we implement this functionality only once and reuse it thanks of the inheritance concept, or also the error handling or synchronizing workers. So these are these basic functionality that we need or want to reuse in every single project. So we can program it once and reuse it everywhere. So what does this mean um, when we um, do it? So we have still this API base and this worker base. Um, this is now a base class. So these API base commands like launch, destroy, show, and hide. So this is done in this API base class. And also on the side of the workers, we have the implementation of these commands, this launch, destroy. This is the real implementation that we want to reuse in every new worker. And what you see now are the uh, inherited API for the specific um, target or for the specific work like this again of, of this oven. So we have just to implement the new commands that we want to use, like stop hitting set point. And we inherit the launch, destroy, show, and hide command of the API, of the base API. On the same side, on the worker side, we also have, as I mentioned, the worker base class. And we have now the concrete implementation or the inherited implementation of this oven, which implements just the commands that we need for this oven and not the others. <clears throat> In the project, it looks like, or how, it, how does it look like now? We have some, a little bit more VIs, but it's, um, it's not that, that many VIs uh, at the moment. So we have this base class here for the API, which implements the API commands. Uh, then we have the worker base, which is just, which consists just of a class file, some case labels, which are the commands to send, and this common case VI. That's the whole implementation of this API um, worker, sorry, for the worker base class. And <clears throat> for the inherited um, classes, it's the additional commands or the additional methods that we need. And on the worker side, it's the main VI of the worker oven and some additional uh, commands on this worker. <clears throat> so um, the next topic is abstracting. 
um, abstracting helps uh, to separate the architecture from the implementation because we do something like a, a contract between uh, some code modules or so that the, the contract of the interface how you want to uh, communicate with uh, some other code modules um, and for us it's the the most important thing is because everybody knows now we are running out of uh, or not we are running out but we it's hardly it's hard to get uh, hardware at the moment in time so we but we still have to make progress in the in um, implementing code but without hardware it's hard so we have here the possibility to implement a simulation worker uh, let's say from this own we can do a simulation of this own and can easily swap in runtime between the real in the, the real implementation of the real oven but during development we can use this simulation oven but we can do everything on the simulation part what we want to do on the real part now yes or we can use similar but not the same hardware but we have always the same api so if you um, have an oven as well or again an oven there are plenty of different models but they are still the same. So they can heat, they can uh, heat up to a set point, they can cooling down to a set point. They have a heating ramp, what else? So the, the interface looks pretty the same or it's the same, but the implementation is a little bit different from one to another. So this abstracting helps us as well to handle this. So if you're looking now from the test and application, we are communicating just with the known, but it doesn't matter if it's a, it's a climate chamber from Vosch or it's a climate chamber from another uh, seller or what else. We have uh, declared the interface and we use exactly the same interface, but at runtime we can decide which oven, which oven we want to use for communicating. So if you do this abstract, uh, in workers, we have again uh, the same uh, image as, as before. We have this API base class which implements all these base uh, commands that we want to use as well as the worker base. And we, ha we have this API from the oven which, which provides test and the, uh, the, the commands that we want to use. But on the worker side, there is in between a abstract worker which um, declares only the messages or the commands that we want to use on the worker and the real implementation now it's underneath so we have a real hardware oven which implements the commands that we declared in the abstract worker or we have an oven simulator which also uh, implements the same commands so we have the possibility now here through the api we can start the, even the oven simulator or the real oven or another one. And on the right side in the project view as well here, it's not that many VIs uh, which we use now. Um, we have this abstract worker oven here, which declares only the commands that we want to use. And we have the real implementation then underneath in the oven simulator or the oven with the real hardware or a second oven or a third oven or different or the different ovens. That helps us to um, launch or we can swap the hardware during test, uh, test and execution runs as well but it helps us in the development process to go further in the development without the, the needs of the real hardware. And my, least, my last uh, topic is debugging. Um, the importance of debugging for me or for us is to debug modules during a running test and execution. So I want to know what's going on on my hardware. Um, and as I said, we um, creating from every worker combined with this with his API a, a specific PPL. So we have a single module that we can copy 
or reuse everywhere. So I want to have the possibility to debug PPLs as well. And there is another point that we also faced uh, in the past. We want to debug over the network. So we have uh, systems which are running somewhere in a company and uh, they're running on a tablet compute and there is no, no, uh, no uh, more space for like uh, development um, IDs. Uh, or test and so I have just the possibility to start and stop my application but I want to know what is happening on the hardware or on the workers so I can use um, so I want to debug this as well and here comes this workers debugger which um, Peter already mentioned which is <clears throat> a very cool thing in my opinion because it helps me to do all these topics or to support in all these topics I can start it remotely. I can debug over the network. I can see which workers are running and which worker is communicating um, with which commands in between and stuff like this. I can do this over the network. And I can also debug per default in a running PPL. So that means in a running test and execution, I can see what's happening in my code modules underneath. And this helps a lot um, during commissioning to see what's happening in uh, in the whole system. So, and as Peter uh, mentioned already, um, he has a very cool homepage which has which has a lot of support materials, YouTube videos, and uh, a very good. Um, very good manual which describes very well how workers work and all these basics that you need to start here. Thank you, Matthias. Um, at the moment, Jörg, I, uh, I can see the number of downloads on uh, the CI Package Manager website. So I think it's 1,200 at the moment. But of course, that's the number of downloads. It's, um, I think every time you release a new version, you counter increments, so you never really know uh, how many installations of workers you actually have. Um, I get emails all the time by different people that are testing it and trying it out. Um, I feel like, um, I mean, I used to work with Matthias at, at, his, at his company, Kubus, uh, uh, and so I showed him the framework, and um, he liked it. And uh, now it's his preferred framework for the projects in his company. Um, I guess there are a few other smaller implementations. I guess most people are kind of like waiting to hear who else has done it, like using workers and how they're going with it, and get some feedback for that. But at the moment, it's it's growing, but um, I don't know of too many large companies that have implemented it. I use it myself on, I've been using it for years on, on all my uh, various projects and uh, Matthias is as well now. Um, but I don't know of too many other use cases on a large scale. Uh, and the, uh, the interface question um, by the GLA admin. Yeah, at the moment, Workers is developed in 2017. I want, the previous version was in 2015, but uh, yeah, I don't want to keep supporting legacy systems, so I, uh, with Workers 4, I, I jumped at two versions of LabVIEW to 2017. And I'll probably have to do this again in, in the future at some point, because I also do want to implement the newer features that LabVIEW offers in uh, later versions of uh, the framework. But I also want to make the framework compatible with previous versions of LabVIEW. Um, maybe five or six years is a good uh, time frame, but in the future, uh, the newer versions of workers will uh, be using the newer features of uh, um So if that's for me, um, so I mean, the framework is, uh, I mean, the, the code is open, the, uh, the tools are not, the, but the framework itself is. Um, I, I plan to, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a project of mine that I really love and I, I love seeing it grow and becoming more and more efficient and I love presenting it to people and um, watching them use it, uh, seeing how it helps them in, in, their, in their projects. Um, I, 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 uh, 
at the moment it's just me working on it um that might change in the future it uh, would be nice if there was more of a um, a team buy behind it um but the plan is uh, for me to sustain it and support it and continue to develop it to in the foreseeable future so because I really do think it's a very useful tool for the community. I feel like the community needs a framework that is very easy to, to use, uh, that core three level developers, CLD level developers, uh, they come out of the core three course, they, they know the Qt message handler, uh, lovely template, um, and then they need a framework where they can just uh, use the knowledge that they know, but to build scalable and modular applications. And if they know a bit of uh, uh, LVOOP, then they can also start using inheritance to create base classes and common features. So, and at the moment, I don't know of another framework that um, that provides all the all these all these features together in a very easy to use package. So, um, yeah, um, I I plan to continue developing it into the future. Uh, the sustainability was also a question from our side, uh, Jörg Bögli. Uh, when we tried to use um, workers in our project because we we don't have well there are some backups but we are using workers now in almost every project and um, the the first point was that it uh, that workers will be open source so the source code is available for everybody and as Peter said uh, if somebody else is uh, committed to support him or whatever um, i think uh, he's not closed or he's open for 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 support and open for uh, help in um, bringing this uh, wonderful workers framework to the next level so from our side we have this uh, sometimes this test meetings with him uh, when he explains the new features and we do the test stuff and bringing some new requirements or wishes or whatever. So it's uh, already driven by two different, let's say, companies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can say that workers are somewhere in between. It uh, is very easy to start with because it's uh, it contains only one VI, uh, it's a little, it's much more lighter than DecomH. Um, you have at least one VI, your, my, your main VI with the QMH um, and pattern, which helps you to start easily in, no, let's say, normal VI, uh, normal lab view. But at the other side, you can um, use all this object-oriented stuff when you want to, which is not possible by DecomH. So, yeah, for us, it's in between um, actor and DQMH. You have the side of both frameworks here integrated in one. But in terms of difficulty, is it, is it would you say it's between actor framework and DQMH? I, I haven't used DQMH personally, so I, I, I can't answer Yes, that. You, can start, you can start easily with the QMH pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and and use it as as you know it from uh, levy core one or uh, levy core two or levy core three and uh, if you want to in use this object oriented or if you have the need to use this object oriented stuff you can easily implement every almost everything what you know from object oriented yeah i created workers so that uh, you wouldn't need object oriented knowledge to um, be able to use it and I, I have case studies where I have um, uh, seen developers who come out of the, the CLD level, they have no object-oriented experience from LabVIEW or from other languages, and they get up and running with LabVIEW with workers very, very quickly. Uh, the ELV, the object-oriented tools and features are uh, can be adopted later on. The framework, I believe, is one that can also grow with the developer. Uh, when you don't have object-oriented knowledge, you can still use it. And then when you gain object-oriented knowledge, you can start implementing uh, more features in the framework with uh, with this new knowledge. So it's good for beginner developers and good for more advanced developers. Um, Custips 
for test stand. Uh, yeah, so um, Andreas, I'm not sure if you um, saw the slide where I spoke about the history of workers, but I, so almost every year I've had a new release of workers since 2018, uh, and there's more ideas in the pipeline. Um, workers 5, hopefully, will come out next year. But yeah, Workers 5 will be focused on, on creating APIs. So creating uh, workers, worker APIs and abstracted worker APIs. Um, it will, it, I'll create a scripting tool that will do basically what Matthias has done um, to use Workers with Test Stand, so that you won't have to manually create the API yourself. You'll have a tool that will uh, kind of standardize this process and, and automate the process for you. Um, so yes. This is what I want to release next year. Yes, and also with the possibility of this um, um, workers uh, library tool, it's also that you can reuse your, let's say, special functionality that you want to reuse everywhere. You can store it, or the idea is also that we that we can share this this uh, stuff um, together and reuse it in some other project as well. So that will help also to, that we don't have to re-implement all the stuff again in all these different companies. Yeah, correct. Um, I didn't talk about, mention that about the library tool, but uh, there is a feature in the library tool that allows you to add your own workers to the tool. So. The library tool with the scripting next year will allow you to create very uh, decoupled uh, workers with an API that are going to be highly reusable. Uh, you can add these to the tool, and then you can just copy these workers into any projects that you have. OK, well, I think that's it, guys. Thanks for joining. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, you can contact me uh, anytime. Um, you, can, you can contact me through the workers main website. Um, again, workersforlabview.com. Um, but yeah, always happy to answer your questions and to uh, listen and discuss with you any new features that you think would be useful in the framework. So thanks for joining.